believe that stupid sleigh broke down again. Lucky enough, I was here uh, right by Alex's shop. Haven't seen Alex in a long time, but uh, let's see if he's here. Ho, 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 Santa's here. You guys on a safety meeting in there? <laughs> What's what that? do you got going on? Dude, the sleigh broke down again, Alex. Oh, shit. I saw your little uh, golf cart sitting out there in the woods, yep. hot-wired it up, and uh, came on in. I might need some help. All right, what you got going on? Well, first off, I heard there might be a vehicle here um, that I need to take a look at. Is that, that my little brother Caleb's uh, 69 GMC? It's quite possible. So here's the deal. Alex used to work at WFO, so it's awesome that I so happened to break down next to his shop. <laughs> full of tools um, but it's also pretty cool that he's working on Caleb's 69 GMC that we started at WFO did a ton of work to it got put away in a container for about 10 years right at least 10 years and just this last year he brought it down to you and said Alex you know on your free time at your uh, in your shop at home maybe uh, just dial in a few things free time just a couple things right? free time couple yeah bars you Almost know. done. It's 90% done, it's right? It's more than 90% well, done. Well, take, take us in here. Show us your shop. All right. Come All check right. it out. I'd like to see your shop. I haven't seen it before. All right. Well, Ori first off, is that a wheel balancer right there? 1964. Woo. And is this your Tonka truck? Easy. That's my kids. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, yep. Here it is, right? Creme de la creme. So, Caleb 69 GMC, four headlight. Uh, it's got a big block 454. NV4500 five speed, uh, full WFO truss, three link in the front, PSC hydro assist, Chevy Dana 60. Um, you guys have done a lot of work on the inside here. I won't go into too much detail, but look at all the tube work, center console, cage. Um, full boxed in chassis, dovetailed in the back for the rear triangulated four link, huge 40 gallon fuel tank tucked in there. We did that at WFO. Looks like you guys kind of got stuffed with finishing it. We pretty much got stuck with finishing it. It's been an insane nightmare since I've seen it you know what 15 I'm thinking? years ago. I'm thinking that we don't really want to show the interwebs uh, where we're at on it any more than we just did. There's still another year of work on this. Thing. Yeah, and maybe we'll save this for a, an actual reveal, right? So show me your give, shop. Give us a year. Forget about the truck, show me your shop. All right. So we, uh, I, have, I haven't really seen this place, so nice shop. Small four by eight table over here. So make, torch mate plasma make, table, yep. right? Makeshift machine shop. Yeah, over and it's here. a water table, so you don't get smoke. Yeah, we still get smoke. Uh, way. Nice little bandsaw. <laughs> so, so Alex, what do we got over here? Here we got our bolt collection. You know, not many people have this nice of a bolt collection, you know, in their own shop at home. It'll happen. Yeah. We got some laser cut WFO tabs. Look, you got flanges, trick tabs, bolt. shock mounts, four bolt tube flanges, two bolt tube flanges. Basically, just for your building pleasure whenever you need it. You need it on hand. Dimple dies. This is one of my favorite additions to a regular shop press. What's this? This is the Northern Tool? No, this is an Edwards oh. press brake. Edwards press yeah. brake. Super universal. Oh, so it was actually bought as a press brake, not just a press. Right, but you can pull it out and use it, use as, it as a, a press for doing normal press. What do you but, got here? Uh, old school mill. And I can't help but see a bunch of wires go around there. This so is a rotary converter, phase converter. So you don't have to run the three phase off a generator because so you can get three phase three in a rural phase, area. Yeah, yep. we had a three phase shop. Now we're stuck Drill in single press, phase. No, no three phase. Lathe, two bender. I mean, you have everything. It's like you recognize this bad boy. Oh, that came from my house. You got a granite surface table yep. for measuring. No, this came from the shop. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, you spent what about four or five years working at WFO? No. I was there for at least seven years. Seven years. See, look, yep. time flies. Time flies. That was about fun. ten years ago. So you came in. You didn't. You were green. You didn't know much at all, and you just sucked it all in. You learned everything. Yep. Uh, you CAD drawing, using the CNC plasma, hand fabricating, and it is awesome. Ten years later, to see what you're doing with your skills. Kept the tradition going. And I want to thank you for building my brother's truck. Um, we know you weren't going to finish it. You know, when when <laughs> one brother works for another brother. Uh, I think we were going to butt some heads, so just, I'll let him butt his heads with you. Yeah. But I know you're the guy to finish it the right way. I appreciate that. Um, giant press break. Uh, uh, what do you got here? What's going on here? Tools we don't use. Ooh, you actually have cutting torches, yeah. huh? 
Yep. Tools we don't use. Use the rosebud quite a bit. Oh, I like that. All different types of welders. Little jig table. You're pretty organized here. Oh, see, you got a flat screen up yeah. there, huh? Ah, oh, that's nice. That's for my guy, Ori. So, <laughs> let, this, I can't help but look at this, too. What's this? This is a 5152 Ford F1 with a six liter diesel. You got Detroit speed wheels. Detroit steel wheels. Let's pretend like we didn't hear six liter diesel. That's a, what do you got, a Sterling in the back? No, 8.8. .8. 8.8. We'll see how that goes. You got a four link with a watch link that you designed. Watch rear fuel link. cell. So I don't want to touch on this one too much. You know, I, I, I'm not sure what trucks to look at because none of them are totally done, but let's just get a peek at the six liter. <laughs> that uh, looks like it's a lot of work left yeah, over or, it's, or there else. We need to tuck this on over with a tarp on it. Yeah, that's going to be yeah. a while, you know? Yeah. And, uh, this yeah. is what you're here for. Or he's sitting in here with the heated uh, seats on. I'm testing. This, I'm getting paid by the hour. So. You can see some of the work, but okay. Enough of this. Uh, I know what we want to talk about. And, you know, we haven't had enough full-size truck stuff. So open this door. Let's talk about your daily, Alex. All right, so this truck, uh, you were driving this truck, it was brand new when you were working for us. Yep. And uh, even back then, I thought you were crazy. You were kind of um, uh, kind of setting a trend. You put 40s on this with what? Brand new truck, 40s leveling kit, chopped it up. I mean, how fit. many people put 40s on a brand new diesel Ford F-250 on a leveling kit. Nowadays they do it, but back then they weren't doing it. I think it. you might have set the trend, right? I tried to. And uh, part of the part of the key to putting the 40s on this thing was these wheels, right? Absolutely. So Hutchinson double beadlocks back yep. in the day. And do you remember how much backspacing they had? I don't, but it was stock. So stock I believe these have five and a half inch backspacing, which you can't buy anymore, which when you put the 40s on the front, it tucked them way into the wheel well. You really didn't have to do that much trimming to get them to fit with right. the leveling kit, right? Not at all. So you drove this thing uh, with 40s for years, and then uh, after you left WFO, fast forward another five, 10 years, and you, you got your shop here at the house, um, what'd you have to do? What'd you have to, where'd you have to go with it? Upsize of 42s. You can't lose no. with 42s, can you? You can't. Everyone's running a bigger tire of 40s, the new 37. 42 is the new 33. 42 is your new 35 on a full size truck these days. So keep so, it low and big. And you can't get good years right now. So you got radials. So you, you go up four wheeling and then you go to you know, go to Walmart and go shopping, huh? Yep. And I tow the trailer down to the coast. Yep, absolutely. All on a sea loaded tire. The old. <laughs> The old family ride. So as you're starting to see here, uh, you got some damage on the side of this, right? Not really. So it's pretty, you know, I actually, I think I might've been involved with this, right? Yeah. Uh, a couple months ago, I asked Alex to come on recovery on the Rubicon because it's a pretty legit recovery rig, right? Well, I told him he had it, but apparently he didn't. We didn't have it. You're good. Oh, what do you think? We didn't have it. No, <laughs> but I, I, I believed you yeah. and you got me through it. But this wasn't me. This was <laughs> Rubicon a couple years ago, right? That's a first Rubicon trip. Yeah. Learned it was a little tighter than I thought it was. And that, and people just don't get it. You are wheeling a four door full size diesel F-250 on the Rubicon. Yeah, where are you gonna put your two kids? And you're not trailing it there, are you? You're no, driving it you up there, drive you're it. driving it home. Sometimes you're bringing your camper and parking that in the parking lot. Oh, that's a good way to do it. Yep. Park the camper, go wheel and come back out. I like that, I like what yep. you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, rock slider's super important. Yep. And this dent was actually before you had rock sliders, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Rock sliders used to be up to here. Most people put the sliders on first and yeah. then go wheeling, but you did it backwards. You learn things every time. Yeah, I get it. Rock sliders last about a year and a half on this truck. Yeah. They, you can't, it eats It just smashes sliders. them and bends them. Yeah. Right? So uh, one of the important things that we want to talk about on wheeling a full-size truck that nobody ever does and nobody ever accomplishes it good is safety, right? Absolutely. And because this is your daily driver, you're putting your family in it, you're putting your two kids in it, you're going to do an extreme stuff, 
you knew that you had to make it safe. And where did that safety start? Roll cage. Open the door. All right. Yeah. I'm proud of this. He should be proud of this. Look at that. Fully integrated roll cage. I mean, I would call that a full on trophy truck style pre runner roll cage. Tried to keep it tight. What size tubing? Inch and three quarter, 120. Tight all the way up pieces. to the body. Yep. Um, one of the things I especially like about it is uh, the, first off, the B pillar goes all the way down into the floor, yep. right? Every pillar hits the frame. Every pillar hits the frame? Yep. Actually goes through the body and hits the frame? Absolutely. Oh, so it's a full on legit cage, right? Yes. Okay. And then what's going on with this A pillar right here? A pillar meets the stock A brace down to the frame. So it goes through the dash, goes behind through the, the dash, dash, all the way down. Through right? the cage, through the, to the front clip. So while we're in here, I noticed that center console. That's uh. That's always plugged in. Got beverages, Capri Suns Absolutely. in there. Absolutely. Juice boxes? Yeah. Absolutely, yep. Um, and then I noticed, you do your own wiring, Alex? No, that's on Ori right there. Oh, all right. I think <laughs> Ori did that, no, yeah. And then I'm looking at this kind of faded plastic. That's the edge attitude for back in the day, right? With juice. With juice. <laughs> all right. And it, I don't know if we said this is what, an 07? This is an 06. 06 F250, yep. Yeah. All right. And it's got the juice. And then you bulletproof the six liter as well, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know what? That roll, the, the thing about the roll cage is we got to show under the hood because not only are you down to the frame in every spot, but I know for a fact you brought it into the engine compartment too, right? It comes through the engine, up through the front clip, down back to the frame. So right through here, engine strut bar removable, comes all the way around to the front. As you can see, had to clearance a little bit for this front tube to fit, right? Right. If I crush this on the trail, I have no idea who would help me fix this. Yeah, this, this isn't is, your normal fix on the you're trail. You're not going to recover this, no. you know, four hours into the Rubicon. No. You got to self-recover. You just leave it there so and safety the parts first you want. When it comes to tubing, <laughs> these tubes go all the way down behind the grill, all the way across in front of the grill, tie into the frame. And then this is my favorite part of the truck. And this is fairly new. Um, what'd you do here? This is a bumper built off the front unit that we build. This is a uh, universal bracket that has a winch mount that can hide behind a stock bumper, or you can build out, you know, whatever you want. We rolled a tube. The tube is rolled nice and tight. Got We've KC got the lights. WFO D rings. Got our D ring mounts. Thanks. Yep. Yep. And uh, I noticed you're running winch rope. Yes. I thought just the kids ran that. It, you know, they do. Yeah. But it, the steel's where it's at. This just looks good. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie. And it's lighter. The steel's, <laughs> you, if you got someone running the cable for you, you want steel. <laughs> so let's, you, let's kneel down and look underneath. Check this out. So uh, right up front here, you have a two inch quarter wall DOM tie rod, right? And what kind of Himes you got there? We've got FK Himes. What's that orange stuff back there? RCV and Reed products. We've got the 300 shafts. So 300M RCVs, Reed knuckles. You have Dynatrack ball joints. And then what do you got on the top there? Yeah, we've got busted knuckle. The ball joint ball eliminator, joint right? Eliminators yep. with the Dynatrack lowers. And then what's that bump stop way back in there? Oh, those are the blue SD Sumo Springs. Sumo Spring bump stop. And then so 7 8 time joint track bar. Your steering's got 7 8 times on it. And then you got the PSC Hydro Assist down there. Yep. Um, and everything is tight, tight, tight. So Super how much tight. lift? How much lift would you say is on this? Um, with my adjustments in the coil towers, probably three and a half inches of lift. You know, while I'm down here, come back down. Look at that. So this front bumper continues all the way back. So that's basically like an intercooler protector as well. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. I that's mean, the first thing you slam down on. First thing you're gonna hit is right on no. the bottom of this, which you haven't yet. So I'm pretty impressed. No, we just got repowder coated. <laughs> we slammed on yeah. it. <laughs> um, we missed what was going on in the wheel well right here. So this is a fairly new rendition. So you have, uh, what are those, Carly coils? Those are a four and a half inch Carly coil with a three inch triple tube, 12 inch long Ooh, Look bypass. at all those tubes and clickers and stuff. Yeah, they make Fancy. a lot of noise. And that's a 12, huh? That is a 12. Dude, that is awesome. And then uh, as we come on over here, you can see the... Uh, 
WFO radius arms down there going to the stock radius arm mount on the frame. And then while we're underneath here, I notice, Alex, you have a full skid plate from front to rear. And uh, you're not hitting, you're not wrecking anything under there, are you? No. You also aren't getting under there to work on anything. No, on not the trail. at all. No. Um, I can see from the back as I look at the front axle, looks like you got an under truss on that thing too. Is that for uh, jumping your F 250? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. We might need to test that That's out. That's the Artec under truss for the Super 60. Oh, nice. Yep, and as we look on the back there, don't mind my butt crack, a uh, <laughs> couple basically uh, WFO torque arms, factory Sterling 10 and a half. Um, what do you got going in the back of this truck, Ori? I'm Alex. Well, excuse me! Ori's over there. Yeah, I meant Alex. This is a <laughs> 60, 65 gallon tank. And this uh, is your fuel tank. This is the fuel tank. It doubles as So why'd you a... take the fuel tank out from underneath? Because race car. Because race car. Yeah. You yeah. just dragged it everywhere. I got it. That's yeah. the first thing that hits. And more fuel, right? Uh, about 30, 40 more gallons more fuel. So, got... but you also have a, a, a pump on there. So in case you need to fuel anybody up on the yep. Rubicon with diesel. Yeah. No one's got diesel on the Rubicon. But every recovery rig needs diesel. The headache rack is classic. I love that. Thank you. Old school look. I, I love what you're going here. Trimmed up the uh, the back corners a little, a little bit. Little pre-runner trim on the nice back. little body work. Uh, I'm sure your wife was real stoked on that when you came she, home with that too. She's completely over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spare tire, and then in the back here, you know, I know when we went on re our recovery, uh, we actually used this. So you have, what do you got here? There's a worn 9,000 winch in the back. It's fully you know covered up and plated you can't even see where it's at hard to get to yep up and there protected what, what kind of rear springs are on here uh devers so you got deaver rear springs are they like two inch rears or something they are stock rears stock rears yep. uh no lift blocks nothing so the rear nope. is basically factory height absolutely you have our wfo hd rear coilover mounts for your shocks there uh 2.5 inch king smoothies yep i believe those are 12s and they look like they have clickers and finned reservoirs. Yep. And you got our U-bolt plates and uh, U-bolts. You can flip it so nothing's hanging down there. Um, basically, the ultimate F-250. And this isn't just a pavement pounder, right? This is get it on kind of truck. We try and use it. Yeah. And, and we also, can we do a disclaimer out to people who have an F-250 and go, well, Alex can do it. I'm going to go on the Rubicon and go four-wheeling. I hope to see other people out there. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. <laughs> You're supposed to say, don't do it. I've completely built everything from front to back. Oh, no. Uh, you just give me a call and we'll help you off the trail. Oh, you'll tow them out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, uh, it's a mess. It's a nightmare. It's a lot of truck to have stuck out on the trail. But I've seen you on the trail. You're, paced, you're patient. You, you weed your way through everything. And I'll tell you what, it's a great truck to have on a rescue because you can pull and yank anything out. And uh, yeah, I don't think anybody realizes... I, you know, I realize, but I don't think anybody realizes how far your fab skills, your design style, you know, how you guys build things has come since, you know, you've been at WFO working with me, and uh, I feel like a proud father. You know, when I come to a shop like this, I see everything you're working on. I'm stoked you're finishing my little brother's truck, um, and I was so happy to have you out on the trail helping us with the recovery and watching this thing work, you know. I appreciate and, uh, that. And that's what this 12 Rigs of Christmas show is about. It's about, you know the people we've met, you know, the relationships we've made in life and where it's going. So, you know, I don't want to get all teary-eyed or anything, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> I need to ride back to my sleigh, you okay? Want, Damn thing broken. Let's grab a couple tools, throw it in here, see if you can recover my sleigh. Sounds good, bud. Sounds good. All right, back to
Oh my god! You know what I need for Christmas? Uh, gorilla tape. No, 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 no. I need a brand new tail light. You need. Uh, I, Sam, can, I can fix the rest. Sam might bring you a brand new tail light. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed that episode of 12 Rigs of Christmas. I know I did. That cost about 500 bucks.